The Galapagos Islands has a reputation for being a lot of things. A fairy tale land where the natural world has evolved mostly untouched, or at least undisturbed, by humans. Remote, wild, and very expensive. Out of reach for backpackers on a budget. We thought that too, until we met a bunch of fellow backpackers that convinced us this wasn't true. Midway through our South America journeys in 2018, with protests building in eastern Bolivia, we decided to change our itinerary and head to Ecuador early. This gave us an extra week in the country, so we decided to look seriously into what we needed to do to get to the Galapagos. Not much, really. It was actually pretty easy. The other backpackers assured us we didn't need to book accommodations or tours in advance. You could negotiate and book when you got there, they said. We just had to grab flights, some permits at each airport, and we could figure out the rest when we got there. The main hub on the island of Santa Cruz is Puerto Ayora. Getting there was a bit stressful though. You need to take a ferry followed by an hour long bus, but there's a lot of pressure to cab into town because the buses are so erratic and only leave when they're full. Water taxis and your own feet are your main way around. It feels like a low-key, normal Ecuadorian fishing town. Once we found a place to stay though and got our bearings, our first trip was to the Charles Darwin Center to see the famous giant tortoises. It wasn't a very action-packed visit although some were more lively than others. They start so small and then get so big. The tortoises don't really want anything to do with anyone, which is definitely for the best. There are some cool paths to walk around. The cacti surrounding you are so unique, prickly, hairy, and contorted. The next afternoon, we made our way out to Tortuga Bay, a popular wildlife spot and one of the most idyllic beaches we've ever seen. Turquoise water and sand that felt like flour. We caught our first glimpse of a sea iguana, and being so excited, I followed it around for 10 minutes before I looked down the beach. They were everywhere. It was so cool. We felt like we had gone back to some prehistoric time. The wildlife is only interested in their own business, whether it's catching some food, or sunbathing. It's tempting to get close, which you really shouldn't, but sometimes you just don't have a choice. That'll settle up right next to you. We settled in to watch the sunset, not knowing that the beach closed at 5 p.m. We didn't take it seriously until we were ushered off the beach, leaving us to enjoy sunset on the walk back to the water taxi. There are lots of nice pathways through the bush, and some interesting things to see. More cacti, rustic restaurants, and salt mines with the backdrop of the strange terrain. Day three and our first day tour out to Pinson Island, a giant mass of volcanic rock. The landscape feels lifeless until suddenly it isn't. Fins started popping out of the water, and we were surrounded by a school of acrobatic dolphins putting on a show. We were mesmerized watching these dolphins, constantly scanning for the next jump. You'd look in the distance only to have one pop up right beside the boat. It was one of the most incredible things we've ever experienced, and it was amazing to think of what life was happening beneath the water's surface. 
It was pretty incredible above it. The next part of our tour took us to a few different lagoons for snorkeling. We saw blue-footed boobies, hundreds of colorful crabs, and playful sea lions. This was an amazing day. The next morning we got on a ferry to San Cristobal. By ferry, what we really mean is a 30-foot boat that you take across the open ocean. It was very choppy and nauseating. We had to really concentrate not to get sick. Once we arrived, we searched for a place to stay and found a nice hostel. The main town on San Cristobal is really beautiful. <laughs> One of the lasting memories of the Galapagos was seeing equal numbers of sea lions and people sharing the beach and the water, all doing the same thing. Young ones playing in the water together, adults chilling on the beach. It didn't matter which species you were. Most of the landscapes around the Galapagos aren't that lush, but the areas you can walk around to the south end of San Cristobal are beautiful tropical oases with great beaches. The next day was a big 360 tour of San Cristobal. There are lots of different tour companies offering this, so we chopped around on the main street until we found something that felt right. We started around the prime snorkel spot of Kicker Rock. These massive rock formations were incredible, rising hundreds of meters out of the deep ocean. Landscapes around us seemed so strange, alien, and desolate with the overcast skies that day. The snorkeling was again the big highlight. We swam with more sea turtles and white-tipped reef sharks, some eerily laying motionless on the lagoon floor. The cool thing we learned was that the ocean currents coming in and out of the lagoons funnel water through the shark's gills so they don't have to keep swimming, keep breathing. The oceans would get quite rough in the afternoons. While it's very cool to be on these small boats for these tours, after hours spent on them, it's really hard not to get nauseous and uncomfortable. Our last morning on San Cristobal was spent hanging out on the beaches with the sea lions one last time. And then we packed up our stuff and walked to the airport from town. Most of the legends about the cost of traveling to the Galapagos come from these fly-in, fly-out cruise tours. 
but we found that if you're already in Ecuador and you can afford the flights, staying on the islands and doing day tours is a great way to see the Galapagos on a budget. No wonder these islands inspired Darwin to write The Origin of Species. Much of what lives here doesn't exist anywhere else in the world. Evolution is so obvious here. Black volcanic rock sprouts green. Prehistoric creatures still walk the earth. The oceans teeming with life. Your place in Earth's grand timeline? So minute. <laughs>